China now leads in 37 out of 44 technologies that will define the next century of human civilization. That's not a prediction. That's the reality staring us in the face right now. The Australian Strategic Policy Institute tracked every critical breakthrough, every patent, every research paper that matters. And the results show a technological shift happening faster than anyone imagined. You're about to see exactly how this happened. So let's start with a study that revealed everything. The Australian Strategic Policy Institute didn't set out to shock the world. They just wanted to answer one question. Which technologies will matter most over the next hundred years? So they built the Critical Technology Tracker. They analyzed millions of research papers. They tracked patent filings across every major economy. They identified 44 critical technology fields. Everything from quantum computing to hypersonic systems. These are the technologies that will determine who controls energy, communications, manufacturing, defense, and space exploration for the next century. Then they ran the numbers. China holds the leading position in 37 of them, not competing for the lead, already there. In fields like advanced battery technology, the gap is measured in generations, not years. In quantum communications, they've deployed systems that others are still theorizing about. But here's what makes this unprecedented. These aren't isolated achievements. Because when you dominate nanoscale manufacturing, suddenly everything else becomes possible. Nanoscale manufacturing is where the future gets built atom by atom. China leads the world in advanced nanomaterials research. They're engineering substances that don't exist in nature. Materials that can heal themselves. Coatings that make objects invisible to radar. This dominance unlocks everything else. Quantum sensors that can detect submarines hundreds of miles away. Photonic sensors that see through walls, through weather, through darkness. These aren't concept drawings. They're operational right now. Then there's the hydrogen economy. While other nations debate whether hydrogen is viable, China's building the infrastructure. Electrolyzers that split water into hydrogen at unprecedented efficiency. Fuel cell technology already powering buses, trucks, and trains across entire provinces. And the foundation underneath it all? Advanced integrated circuit design and manufacturing. China's producing seven nanometer chips domestically. They're racing toward five nanometer production with entirely homegrown technology. The compounding effect is staggering. Better nanomaterials create better sensors. Better sensors enable better AI. Better AI designs, better chips. It's a self-reinforcing cycle that gets faster with each iteration. But while the microscopic world is being mastered, something even more dramatic is happening above our heads. China's Beidou navigation system now has more satellites than GPS. They built an entire global positioning network from scratch in less than two decades. And it's more accurate. Beidou provides positioning down to four inches. GPS gives you about 16 inches on a good day. But positioning is just the beginning. Heat shields that withstand 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Composite materials lighter and stronger than anything flying on Western rockets. The Tiangong Space Station is operational and expanding right now. The Chang'e missions have landed on the far side of the moon multiple times. They've returned lunar samples. They're building the International Lunar Research Station. Not planning to build it, building it. Then came the announcement that changed everything. Space-based solar power, arrays collecting sunlight 24 hours a day. The first test satellite is already operational, power that never stops flowing. When one nation controls orbital infrastructure, they control communications, navigation, surveillance, and potentially unlimited energy. But space superiority means nothing without the power to use it. China produces 77% of all batteries made on Earth. Solid-state batteries that charge in minutes instead of hours. Sodium-ion batteries that don't need lithium at all. Battery cells with energy densities that were considered physically impossible three years ago. Over 13 million electric vehicles sold last year alone. That's more than the rest of the world combined. Electric buses have replaced diesel in hundreds of cities. Entire taxi fleets are electric. 
all running on batteries, deployed at a scale that rewrites economics. They're building nuclear reactors faster than anyone else can plan them. The EAST reactor has sustained plasma at 200 million degrees Fahrenheit for over 17 minutes. That's three times longer than any other fusion project on Earth. Solar panels, 80% of the world's supply. Wind turbines, 60% global market share. They've installed more renewable energy capacity in five years than Europe and North America combined have installed in 20. What happens when a nation achieves energy independence and unlimited manufacturing capacity? They can build anything, at any scale, as fast as they want. And they're using that power to build the smartest machines humanity has ever created. Artificial intelligence needs three things, computing power, data, and deployment at scale. China has all three in quantities that dwarf everyone else. Facial recognition systems that identify individuals in crowds of millions, in train stations, in airports, on city streets at rush hour, accuracy exceeding 99%. These systems process data from over 600 million surveillance cameras nationwide. Machine learning algorithms designing new materials faster than human researchers ever could. Natural language processing so advanced that AI writes news articles humans can't distinguish from human writers. Real-time translation across dozens of languages with near-perfect accuracy. The data advantage is unstoppable. 1.4 billion people using smartphones. Every transaction feeding the algorithms. The AI learns from the largest real-world data set in human history. Every day, it gets smarter. But the most terrifying thing about artificial intelligence? It needs a body. The robots coming off production lines move with fluid precision that mimics human motion. They grip objects with enough sensitivity to handle an egg, or enough strength to lift 500 pounds. Humanoid robots are already working in factories, not as experiments, as employees. They work 24 hours a day without breaks, without errors, without fatigue. And these robots are building the next generation of robots. The manufacturing capacity is multiplying itself. Surgical robots performing operations with accuracy measured in micrometers. Agricultural robots that identify and pick individual fruits without bruising them. Synthetic biology merged with robotics. Robots covered in lab-grown skin that can feel pressure and temperature. The feedback loop is accelerating. AI designs better robots. Robots build better factories. Better factories produce more advanced AI systems. But robots are useless if they can't communicate. 5G wasn't the finish line. China deployed 5G networks covering 99% of cities while other nations were still arguing about spectrum allocation. Over 3 million 5G base stations operational. But they're already building 6G. 6G promises speeds 100 times faster than 5G. Test systems are already running. Networks that can handle a trillion connected devices simultaneously. Quantum key distribution networks stretching thousands of miles. Encryption that's mathematically unbreakable. Maglev trains hitting speeds over 370 miles per hour. Smart city infrastructure operational in hundreds of cities. Traffic lights that adapt in real time. Energy grids balancing supply and demand across millions of buildings every second. Billions of connected sensors creating a nervous system for entire cities. And that brings us to what it all means. 37 out of 44 technologies. But that number doesn't capture what's really happening. These technologies multiply each other's impact. Advanced nanomaterials enable better batteries. Better batteries power superior electric vehicles. Superior manufacturing builds more advanced robots. Those robots construct the next generation of factories. The cycle accelerates with every iteration. This is the infrastructure advantage that took three decades to build. While others outsourced manufacturing, China built the factories. While others debated industrial policy, they trained 100 million engineers. They poured trillions into supply chains that turn a breakthrough into a deployed technology in months. 8 million STEM graduates every year. 
engineers who go directly into companies racing to commercialize the next breakthrough, researchers who publish papers and then build the factories to manufacture what they just discovered. The strategic patience is what made this possible. Plans that stretch across generations. The willingness to lose money for a decade, to dominate an industry for a century. Catching up isn't about working harder. When someone has a 10-year head start and they're improving faster than you can catch up, the gap doesn't close, it widens. History teaches us that technological supremacy defines civilizations. Britain ruled the waves because they mastered steam power. America dominated the 20th century because they led in aerospace and computing. The 21st century is being shaped right now by who controls artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and advanced manufacturing. The world being built isn't theoretical, it's operational. Megacities, running on renewable energy, managed by artificial intelligence. Transportation networks, where vehicles drive themselves. Communication systems, where information moves at the speed of light through unbreakable encryption. Manufacturing facilities, where robots build robots that build everything else. The race for the next hundred years isn't starting. It already happened, and the scoreboard reads 37 out of 44.